Okay. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, welcome to our uh, regular meeting number 11, which in actual fact is a special meeting that's been, uh, it's been called to deal with the, uh, the pending uh, Ocean Choice International project in the Long Pond Harbor. Uh, and I just want to confirm, of course, that the, uh, the um, uh, additional uh, time frames have been given to allow us to have this meeting. There was two weeks notice given to the public. So we're ready to go. And of course, according to our rules and regulations, because it is a special meeting, we will only be dealing with the one agenda item, which is the OCI application, the Long Harbor infill. So I would like, first of all, to uh, call for a motion to adopt the agenda for June the 29th, 2021. Moved by, moved by Councillor Butler, seconded by Bercy. By Junior Bercy, Councillor Junior yep. Bercy. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm reminded, motion is carried. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'll now turn it over to the chair of the Planning and Development Committee, Councillor Rex Hillier, to bring forward the uh, applicable resolution. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, this afternoon, we received a, an indication at the Provincial Office of the Citizens' Representative has released a report indicating that the province was incorrect in releasing OCI from environmental assessment. We haven't received that in any official fashion because that is provincial, as we've said so many times, as provincial jurisdiction. So we've just received it third hand. But I certainly respect the work that's been done by the uh, citizens' representative and want to respect uh, the work that's been done by our own residents who have concerns with the ecology in the pond and, and have gotten this issue to the attention of the uh, citizens representative. So today we had to make a decision uh, as to whether we'd approve this tonight or vote on this tonight, pending uh, the province confirming the environmental assessment or whether we put it off until things were, were settled. Given that the town has done its work and even with this decision this evening, there are other uh, regulatory permits that need to be straightened out from the feds and others from the province. We've decided to go ahead and bring this motion forward, uh, pending the province confirming its position on the environmental assessment. So, following is the recommendation that's, that we're bringing forward from our committee to hold meeting this afternoon. Be it so resolved that in accordance with sections 4.15 and 5.10 of the town's development regulations, the land use impact assessment report regarding the proposed harbor infill project at Terminal Road be accepted as submitted. And further, be it so resolved that in accordance with sections 5.3 and 5.6 of the interim development regulations 2003, application number COM-20-064 Cemented on July 13, 2020, with revisions on August 6, 2020, and June 3, 2021, for development of a 2.73 hectare of harbor infill, including a 90 meter finger pier within Long Pond Harbor at Terminal Road, be approved, subject to receipt of approvals from other regulatory agencies, including any further decision by the government of Newfoundland and Labrador with respect to environmental assessment, so moved. I'll second that. You're on mute, uh, Deputy Mayor. I'm sorry, uh, everybody. Uh, you've heard the motion. It's been seconded by Councillor Tilly. Uh, any discussion? We'll open it up for discussion. I'll start with Councillor Hillier. Uh, yes, Your Worship. This is a, a two part motion. Uh, the Land Use Impact Assessment Report is the study document that we've asked for from OCI and that we've used to inform our decision making. The second part is the approval of the application that OCI has brought forward to move forward uh, with this project. Your Worship, this has been an ongoing for 10 months in the hands of our planning and development committee. In that time, we've seen three or four modifications of the OCI OCO proposal 
Our committee has not brought any of the other proposals forward for ratification because there were flaws in them that we as a council and local residents had significant concerns with. Over the winter, OCI took those concerns and went away and developed this plan that we have in front of us today. It mitigates against some of the concerns that were expressed by our residents. Uh, we feel it strikes a balance between the industrial users of the harbor and recreational users and those who live in the vicinity of the town. And this evening, our committee is pleased to bring forward this motion for council consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hillier. Um, Councillor Bent? Uh, thank you, Deputy. Um, over the past 11 months, Council has been considering this application by Ocean Choice International. In my six and a half years on Council, there hasn't been a proposal or application before us that has seen so much attention from Council or the public. Nothing has come close. I want to let the residents know that I appreciate your meetings and your calls and emails, both for and against and some neutral to help guide my decision in making during this long process. On many issues and dealings I have are directly related to Ward 1, where I've been elected to represent the residents' concerns. However, on this and many occasions, I'm asked to decide on a matter that is in the interest of all residents of the town. The first two proposals that came to us from OCI and others, I had very serious concerns. I felt that the location of the wharf was not conducive to safe navigation by our recreational boaters and regular users. The second proposal was somewhat better, but quite frankly, didn't address those concerns in my view. From the people I heard from, this was one of their main concerns, interference of use of the harbor that has been a tradition for some and a wonderful new experience for others. I have said many times in the chamber and at economic development committee meetings and as part of the town's tourism committee, that I believe that Conception Bay South could and should be one of the provinces, well, be the provinces, recreational boating capital. And I don't wanna see that goal affected in any way. We have tremendous potential given our climate and our bay. It's why I held out for a better plan and others did as well. One that would allow recreational boating, youth sailing and local marinas to continue with their use and be able to expand without being held back by commercial development jutting out into their traditional portion of the harbor. The newest proposal sees the construction of a new wharf, an expansion of the current commercial dock in the commercial portion of Long Pond that will be a benefit to our town for decades to come. Wharves are not constructed without some infill, that's a fact, everywhere. And, make, and, and to make this portion of the industrial side of the harbor viable, there will be infill. But the end result will be much more robust commercial harbor that will see tax benefits for all of our residents. The council wanted a better plan from OCI and we got one. One that will now cost OCI two to three million dollars more due to the location change. And I'm glad they're willing to spend that money, but my support was contingent on it. The expansion on the industrial side of the harbor will allow the recreational portion of the harbor to expand. Something I hope uh, to work with future councils to ensure becomes a reality for our residents to enjoy. Not just at Long Pond, but in many areas along the beautiful coastline of Conception Bay South. Striking this balance was critical to my support of the plan. I look forward to working with user groups so that our recreational enjoyment of Conception Bay is enhanced to become a bustling industry for our town. The possibilities are endless. And from one end of the shoreline to the other, not just for the enjoyment of boaters, but areas with amenities for those who want to watch the sunset or simply sit on the beach or appear and enjoy the scenery. Long Pond Harbor is also an industrial harbor. You can see it from many parts of the town. Go down Terminal Road and take a look. It's clear. Loading and offloading of goods on a regular basis. You know, before the wharf was blocked off, residents used to go down there and watch the large ships offload in the harbor. It was quite a sight. It was an attraction. Along Terminal Road, there are a number of commercial developments and room to expand, and there should be expansion. Commercial tax dollars are important to our town. St. John's, Paradise, and Mount Pearl see much of the work funded in their towns by commercial tax dollars. But we lag behind here in CBS. Our residents are paying the bills in our town. In other towns, commercial taxes pay those bills. This has to change. It has to change. Our residents are taxed enough already. Are you paying enough municipal taxes? I know you are, I know I am. And with the growing cost of everything, everything from food, lumber to gas, steel, 
Our tax dollars don't go as far as they once did, and this year has been particularly bad. And this council has fought to keep the mill rate steady, but it can't last forever. Not without more commercial tax revenue. We need to capitalize on commercial revenue opportunities to ensure our residents are protected from tax increases. We sit here today concerned that the federal government will increase <coughs> taxes in the spring and the provincial government may do the same after a review. To me, this means that our town must do everything possible to ensure that we can hold the line. Seniors told me at the door when I campaigned that they had to hold off on the upkeep of their homes and that they were concerned on the rising cost of food, especially on fixed incomes. Young families struggling with high mortgages, working families holding off on plans because of uncertain economy. And it's been especially hard during COVID. And now inflation is on the rise. I know there's some residents out there that want us to pass on this investment. They feel the dock shouldn't be expanded on the industrial side of the harbor. And I've heard from some of them say that the jobs are coming, that they're not good enough, or the taxes won't be enough, or the economic spinoff for our local economy is unknown, it's not good enough. Well, I'm here to say that that's ridiculous. It's insulting to people looking for work. It's insulting to people who are concerned about the taxes they pay. And it's an affront to our local business community that employs people right here in CBS. I'll tell you what I think. We need more jobs right here in CBS so that more and more of our residents don't have to get up extra early to drive to St. John's and work the first hour or two of their day just to pay for the gas that got them there. Jobs in CBS are good jobs. There's no such thing as a job in CBS that isn't important. It's good for our economy and that, that there's no way that those jobs aren't good enough. If you say that, the money, taxes, jobs aren't something you're too worried about, I can tell you. All money spent in CBS at CBS businesses is important to our town and all economic spinoffs in this area are important to the people who work here now and those looking to set up here. Economic spinoffs will attract more business. It's how it works. Businesses don't go somewhere where they can't get supplies for things they need to operate. Success breeds success in business. And commercial success attracts retail, something our residents have been calling for. More retail. Well, here's this is how it happens. This is how it happens, what we're doing right here tonight. We said at a council four years ago that when we, we were open for business for this very reason, the desperate need for commercial tax revenue. And we are. One of the largest construction companies, Atlantic Canada, maybe the largest, is setting up in CBS, and we welcome them and the jobs they bring. And when OCI opens up shop here, I hope to have the opportunity to join them for the ribbon cutting. It will be a great day for CBS. I know for a fact that there are other communities just hoping that we get this wrong, that they will get the project, that they've been on the phone to OCI weekly. Other communities, some just around Conception Bay, some on the Buren Peninsula, would love to start paving roads and putting in sidewalks with money that CBS passed on from OCI. Well, wouldn't that be a shame? I know before I was on council, the previous councils had some real opportunities that just slipped through their fingers, game changers that didn't happen. Well, I'm not blaming them, it's business. So very few of these opportunities ever get to this stage anywhere in Newfoundland and Labrador. It took three years for OCI to submit an application after obtaining rights to the area. There was a lot of pressure on them to go elsewhere. To be honest, I was a little surprised when we actually got to this application. So we don't wanna let it go. Let's pave roads and build sidewalks here in CBS with OCI money. Here's the bottom line. The province has not put up any roadblocks to this pro project. Even as late as today, it confirmed their position. The federal government has reviewed and given approvals right up to this date. And this recommendation is fully contingent, of course, on all federal and provincial approvals. The science, forget the rest. Let's just go with the science, like we do for COVID, especially the new hydrodynamics, which shows this project will have marginal impact based on simulation of the most significant storm modeled. Marginal impact. On the, based on the most significant storm modeled. And any impact on sedimentation is low. The modeling shows no impact on existing ice conditions. Flooding and ice buildup were concerns, something that many of the people voiced all through this process. I listened to those concerns, this council did, and went out and got the science, and it shows the project is good to go. The review of this proposal by engineering firms and council and residents has been exhaustive and quite frankly, exhausting. But this process has been important and I'm proud to have been part of it. Tonight, my support will be for the future of CBS 
and for the benefits for all of its residents and contingent on all the permits being in place and any other requirements. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bent. Uh, we'll go by, we, we'll move it back and forth from Ward Councillor to at large. So we we'll move over to at large now and I'll ask uh, Councillor Kirk Uden if he would like to have a word or two. Yeah, I, I, I certainly echo a lot of uh, Councillor Bent's um, uh, concerns and, and about, I guess, the initial proposal and so forth. I just want to touch on a couple of, of, of guest processes. One is um, the journey for Conception Bay South in terms of the Lampan Port. So we acquired the Lampan Port and set up a port authority um, with the option to make the port a sustainable um, economic driver for the town. And for a large part and portion, they tried to do that. Uh, wharf space and, and, and such, the capacity has been an issue. And, you know, the Port Authority and staff have worked hard to present opportunities for council to consider. The sale of water or land or what have you for this project uh, does not proceed without council approval for a final development. Uh, that's what we're here tonight for. So contrary to some comments in the public, it's it's worthless unless they get approval for the project. So, um, you know, I think that's an important consideration when we when we move forward. I, I'd, I'd just like to reiterate, there was an appeal uh, and our initial approval and council has taken steps to uh, reaffirm our planning, I guess, authority and which we always thought and still believe that we do have and we do have the right to approve projects in this and we've done so for the last 15 or 20 years that I've been on council and and we certainly have the right going forward. The original proposal from my view um, did not strike the balance uh, between the recreation and the industrial side to harbor. Uh, like Councillor Bent, I did have some reservations in terms of safety and passage and, and potential ice damming and so forth. And I think the revised proposal certainly moves that uh, proposal to the commercial side to harbor. And it certainly addresses uh, a lot of those uh, concerns that I initially had. In fact, I probably wouldn't have supported under that. And I do thank the, the developer uh, or the applicant for uh, you know, making the investment, the additional investment that they've made to make, you know, I guess the revised portion, um, uh, uh, you know, I guess uh, closer to the industrial side. Um, the, I guess the last point I, I will make and, and is, you know, the town of Conception Bay South struggles um, with, you know, everything that we do, residents pay 90%. And that's an imbalance that's not healthy. And we said several years ago that we want to be open for business and we want to treat fair companies that are coming in fairly and equitably. And we want to make the best decisions for the town of Conception Bay South and its residents. I think this proposal and others uh, in the future are, are taking us along that path. Uh, I think we've given thoughtful consideration to uh, all the comments. Uh, I think we've tried to address it based on science and, and our review of that. And uh, I'll be supporting this proposal tonight. And um, because I think it does strike that balance uh, in our arbor and that it should be uh, something that can support the long-term growth of, of Conception Bay South and the Long Pond Port. That's it, your worship. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Uden. Uh, now we'll move back to the at large side, uh, Councillor Cheryl Davis, if you have anything you'd like to bring forward. Thank you, Deputy Mayor Murphy. Uh, when an application comes before council, there is a process that begins. The type and nature of the application creates a process to be followed. And the town has a responsibility to do due diligence to every application, follow rules, policy, development regulations, provincial laws, and federal laws. The process in response to this application has been a thorough one. In my four years on council, the work on this application has been second to none. The decision to be made is an important one. Serious and important consideration and deliberation has occurred. I can assure council and residents that I have kept an open mind. 
The feedback has been helpful, having received numerous messages, emails, phone calls, and people have from time to time spoken to me personally and privately. While the public comments have been often negative, I have also received numerous comments in favor of this project. I am not an expert, nor am I expected to be. We rely on advice from subject matter experts. Throughout the process of considering the application, we have relied on our staff. We relied on consultations on decisions under the purview of the provincial and federal governments. This is not unique to this application. In this case, for example, the provincial government has the sole responsibility to decide if an environmental assessment is required or to release the project for, from the need for an environmental assessment. It is not a town decision and the, and the town has no authority to override the decision of government. When the town first became aware that the province had released OCI from the requirement of an environmental assessment, town staff discussed the decision with the province. Concerns with environmental assessment were discussed with the minister responsible for environment, climate change and municipalities by our deputy mayor Murphy. The deputy mayor also helped brief the recently appointed environment minister, Minister Davis on this file. The requirements for environmental assessment were also discussed at a senior staff level. It is my understanding that some residents also met with the environment minister to discuss the con this concern. We have no option but to accept the decision on OCI being released from a requirement to complete an environmental assessment. With this particular file, the town's responsibility was to require a land use impact, impact assessment report. An extensive report was prepared and subsequently updated. It is available on our website. Your Worship, when you think about it, development often creates impact on the environment. To build a road, you have to cut down trees. To build a house, you have to damage or remove existing vegetation. So development is not always perfect. Development can impact our environment. In regards to this application, it's not perfect either. However, on balance, I believe it will be a good product, a good project for our town. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Davis. Uh, next, I'll ask uh, Councillor Junior Bursi, uh, Ward 2, if you have any comments. Yes, Your Worship. Uh, um, I'll go back in time, Your Worship, uh, back in the, in, the, in the early 2000s. Because uh, I feel like it's a, it's a, uh, I, 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 I feel like that uh, it is that I got to. I ran against Mr. Gerald R, but lost to a very close campaign. It was a good campaign. There is no more slinging uh, in the, in the, in the that campaign. I only had a boy. I had a few signs kicking around at the time, and I thought that they were all, uh, all gone. But uh, little did I know that my father had, uh, had one uh, talked away. Uh, up in his bedroom, his mother told me, and uh, and the mother said, "Hey, he said, why aren't you uh, uh, is is getting rid of that sign?" No, he said, "Boy, as you wouldn't run again sometime." But he passed away uh, a year before the uh, the twenty seventeen election, so that that uh, that kind of motor that kind of motivate me to run. So uh, so it was, so anyway, I I ran the uh, four years ago. And I got elected. Then my mother was my biggest, uh, I, I would say, supporter. She, she was in the in hospital uh, as two weeks prior to election campaign, answering the phone, taking calls, getting the uh, egg get, is is getting the votes out, to, uh, uh, getting the votes out for me. And on the night election, uh, I called her on her phone. I told her I won. Told her I uh, I uh, I uh, I uh, I uh, talked to her in the morning. I never did that. Ten days later, she died. Anyway, so uh, 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 for the first for the past four years, I worked hand in hand with every council member on there. We had some good times and bad times, and uh, I thought we worked for the people of CBS, 
doing the best we can with the, the uh, with the uh, 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 what we had. Did we get it right all the time? Maybe not, right? But we, but we're, everybody that's at the that around council was there for the old CBS in general. So, uh, so deputy, this this leads to this uh, statement I'm going to make. For every mile of our road, you go through uh, uh, two miles of gutter. Uh, deputy, this last year, says the uh, say the least, we all been through that gutter on this project. But we kept our head up by focus on our uh, on uh, on uh, on what's best for the town, dodging bullying, intimidation only by a few though, uh, because I wouldn't support uh, uh, their views. But if we listened to them, we we listened to the groups, we uh, if we heard them. That's why it took the deputy over a year to make this the uh, uh, this decision. And we never got it right in the beginning, as everyone knows that. But we uh, and we all admitted that. That's why it took us so uh, uh, so long to get there. Uh, uh, now, uh, some eleven months later, lots of phone calls supporting the project. I had lots of them. Says uh, uh, he says. Uh, and one person says, Junior, why do you, uh, why do you guys put up with, with this uh, in the public? Uh, and is it worth it? And my simple reply is yes. Uh, we all love the town we live in. We had a, we had a countless meetings on this, too many to count, met many groups, listened to them, and, uh, and pushed back when needed. Took uh, took lots of comments on the uh, on the project that wasn't uh, uh, as as so nice. Uh, it's too bad to repeat here. I vote against the uh, the L I R uh, 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 consultation uh, because I felt we we needed more uh, in information. As I was keen for a couple of days, ever doing that, and then uh, uh, that got short lived. Uh, I read every email, sat on every meeting, listened to everyone's concerns. Meetings three and four hours Sunday night. Uh, we listened to the people. We heard their concerns. Uh, I think the, through the through the concerns of the uh, of the people, that's why the uh, air project was pushed back to uh, is uh, uh, where it was too. I had concerns, to be honest, which uh, is deputy with the channel when it was originally. Uh, uh, every, a proposed and a and blind turn uh, that uh, that the uh, that the uh, the infill was uh, was coming out that far uh, in the channel. Uh, it was addressed with OCI and uh, was, and everyone said it was a grave grave uh, a concern on moving forward that uh, that the, the the channel needed to be safe passageway for the for, for the residents come for uh, every decades. Uh, uh, the uh, the uh, in, uh, new proposal solves this as to the uh, residents. Uh, I was speaking to uh, on the same thing that now that the channel is much more accessible and uh, and the easier access uh, for the uh, air for the fishing season and, and safety and the and the ultimate concern was uh, was for the safety of the residents going in and out that channel and I think that that has been uh, had, had been accomplished now. Deputy, I feel it's a balance between the uh, between everything that the, that the town needs, and uh, I think we listened to the people, we heard what they said, and uh, that's why we're here tonight, and uh, and uh, and I'm willing and absolutely uh, in support of this project going forward uh, uh, in time. Thank you, Worship. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Bursey. Uh, Councillor Gerard Tilly, if you have a comment or two, please go ahead. Yes, Your Worship, I do have a couple of comments. Uh, before I get into my personal comments, I just, I just want to have a little chat with regards to the land use impact assessment study that the town, that the town uh, required. For those of you who are not familiar with what a land use impact assessment is, is a report that assesses both long-term and short-term implications on land uses in the vicinity of a proposed development and recommend appropriate effective mitigation measures to address any adverse effects of, of a project or by affecting the development. Council was adamant and this is, and this is, that this was to be completed in the absence of the provincial environmental assessment. 
In all my years on council, this is by far one of the most intense land use, act, land use impact assessment reports that I've ever seen completed for a project in Conception Bay South. Once again, while the provincial government advised that the environmental assessment was not going to be carried out, this land use impact assessment was a must for our council. It addresses, it, it addresses many of the concerns that were sent in by concerned citizens. There were several reports, research studies completed that address concerns of residents through the public consultation process. Just to touch on a few uh, issues dealing with uh, coal storage operations, noise, traffic, odor, lighting, awful waste, flood risk analysis. We, uh, we had studies on the hydrology, hyd hydraulic studies, topographic and bathymetric mapping, climate change and inundation mapping, flood risk mitigation, geotechnical review, borehole investigation, rockville replacement, sediment environmental samples analysis, water and sanitary services, regulatory approvals and authorizations. OCI in their application process, they had to meet all the federal, provincial and municipal regulatory processes prior to any approval. There was also a traffic impact assessment. I had, I had many discussions with people and of course, and, and even on social media, it's phone calls, emails. You know, a lot of people said that we, that we didn't listen. I mean, this report right here tells me that we did listen and that we tried our best to make sure that we addressed all of those concerns of residents. Now on to my personal notes. Good evening to the residents of Conception Bay South. Ocean Choice International made application to operate a cold storage facility in Long Pond Harbor. As with any business application, the town welcomes any business that shows interest in setting up in our town. When the approval of principal came public, I admit that the town was slow out of the gate and we owned that and we quickly rectified it. Since that time, all correspondence has been made public via social media, as well as a dedicated page on the town's website. And that continues to today. To say that we have not listened to the concerns of residents is simply a false statement to make. The proponent has made several changes to the location of the plan to ease concerns for area residents. I'm not going to get into it because some of my previous counselors, they've certainly, um, they've certainly had, uh, had said all that stuff. So prior to any application coming before council, the applicant had to meet, once again, the several, several requirements from principal and federal regulatory bodies. And of course, that everything from permits to alter body of water, environment, climate change, Department of Fisheries notions, navigable waters, all of those are contained in our land use impact assessment report. Long Pond Harbor is well known as a commercial industrial harbor for my whole life, all 52 years and even before that. Uh, it supported numerous, industry, numerous industries while also being home to a seasonal recreation boating activity. The harbor has always balanced both commercial activity with recreational use. Safe access and navigation for those who currently use the area for recreation and or business purposes has always been a priority for the applicant and us as a town. With this up -deve updated development plan, the navigation path used today by boaters traveling from the inner pond will be safe. Recreational boaters, cod fishers, will still have access to Conception Bay, no different than last year, no different than yesterday, no different than today, and no different than tomorrow. People will still be able to go out in their kayaks, still be able to go out in their whatever kind of float, floating device to use. They'll still get out there safely. Council did have some serious concerns, once again, bought up by concerned citizens regarding the potential for flooding, tidal movement, and ice jams. So much so that council went and commissioned a second study. These findings came, came back and advised that there, was, there would be limited change in these areas with the proposed infill by OCI. I listened to resident, uh, area residents about their concerns, but I have to take into consideration that some of those opinions may have been more from the heart than from their professional experience because they live in the area and I don't think they're fussy on the application in the first place. So I've, I took time out of, out of my busy schedule. I've reached out to other folks in the, in the field, the marine industry, and they concur with the findings of the report that I showed them. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the appeals board decision. There's been quite a bit of discussion on this. An area business owner fought an appeal regarding his business and the town's jurisdiction in the Harbor. And he or they, 
are entirely in their right to do that. The appeal board, the appeal board subsequently ruled in favor of the applicant and the town did it by the ruling of that decision. No, no different than, it, than if the table was turned and there was a different, a different outcome. One of the options for either party was to have the right to appeal that decision. The town has every right to appeal, especially when it's in the best interest of the town. And I fully support that appeal process. What we also have to look at as well is that the appeal board in their, in their decision advised that the appeal board advised the town regarding jurisdiction. Obviously they said that we didn't have jurisdiction, but they lined out in black and white what exactly we needed to do in order to get jurisdiction of the harbor. And that is exactly what we done. There was no backdoor deals. There was no secret meetings. Everything was above board. I'd like to address uh, uh, an, an area that I guess has as good points and has as bad points and that's social media. There's been quite a bit of social media over the past year from single people, uh, special interest groups who were opposed to development in the harbor. I know some of the people, I don't know some of the people, but you know, it's, it's a free world and everyone is allowed to have their say. We tried to work with, with most people to address some of the concerns, but in the end, there was no happy medium other than the proponent not building on the land that they required from the Lamp Pond Harbor Authority. Day in, day out, there's a continual, there's a continual barrage that we are not listening, and this is simply not true. There's a huge difference between not listening and not liking the answers of what they hear. There's also been much discussion over the sale of land for a dollar. The Lamp Pond, Har the Lamp Pond Harbor Authority has an agreement in place for the land in the harbor for one dollar. That is correct, but there's a little caveat. OCI plans to spend anywhere from 17 to 21 million dollars to develop that particular piece of land. And I'm sure if anyone else wanted to buy that land for a dollar and provide Lampond Harbor Authority with a business plan, I'm sure that Lampond Harbor Authority would entertain them as well. And I'll give you an example. If Walmart called the town tomorrow, I give them the land for a dollar too. The economic spin offs definitely outweigh and it'll be better for this town. We are a vast community. Right now, as a couple of my counters already alluded to, our commercial tax base is about 15% of our general revenue. How many times do I read on social media that, oh, I wish we had this like Paradise. I wish you had this like Mount Pearl. I wish you had this like St. John's. Ladies and gentlemen, those three places that I just mentioned, they have an extensive commercial tax base, bringing in 10 times the money that the town of CBS brings in. We rely heavily on residential tax bases to operate our day to day. People want upgraded parks. People want more playgrounds. They want better infrastructure, paved roads, sidewalks, continuation of water and sewer services. Folks want community centers, arts centers. Seniors want better tax breaks. Ladies and gentlemen, attracting businesses like OCI is how we get the necessary business tax to offset these enormous costs. Are the taxes from this one company uh, going to solve everything? No, but it's a step in the right direction. We, all nine of us around, or eight of us for, for, for this particular vote, we are elected to represent the people of the municipality of Conception Bay South, from Topsail to Seal Cove, all points in between. Ladies and gentlemen, I support this, uh, this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Tilly. Uh, Councillor Christine Butler, do you have a few words you want to say? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Um, boy, all of you before me, you've said so much and uh, pretty well most of what I was probably going to say. <laughs> But of course, I will say a few things, and I do have a few uh, comments I do want to make on OCI. But first of all, I want to thank the residents, town staff, councillors, and OCI for the time, the input, the effort, the dollars put into this project and in working to be able to make it something viable for our town, something that we really, really need as a tax base. 
And I am really pleased that after the original proposal was not what anybody wanted, that OCI was able to go back, listen to concerns of residents, town staff, councillors, and we were able to come up with a revised project, something that would work for everybody, recreational bowlers, for all our residents, to have more money in the, in the tax dollars. OCI is an internationally, locally owned and operated, highly respected community minded corporate citizen, chose our municipality to invest 15 to $20 million in the core, core economic development, introducing a new sector to our community and diversifying our economic tax base. A new company that is a major player in the fishing industry is joining the local economy. There's always a potential for a cluster of supporting businesses to chase this. That would certainly be our hope. During the construction phase, the economic spin-off will be realized by third-party construction and contracting companies and other local services providing businesses. The Long Pond Harbor Authority will gain a new port user, increasing revenues and allowing them to continue facility improvements and business development. We are very proud that Olson Choice International has chosen Conception Bay South as their ideal place to invest consolidate and conduct local, local business. With regards to taxes and fees, and some of the other councils have already mentioned this, but I have no reason not to rehear it again because it's very, very important for a town where most everything that we provide to our residents is paid for by our residents. So it was nice to see a, a company that's going to be investing approximately 15 to 20 million and not availing of other incentive opportunities. So therefore, the town is pleased to have come to an agreement on taxation and with Olson Choice. Olson Choice will pay $630,513.36 over a 10-year period for commercial property and business taxes. Additionally, Olson Choice will pay water and sewer taxes based on usage, which will be metered and subject to rates as outlined in the town's annual schedule of rates and fees. It is important to note that Olson Choice will be responsible for the installation of water and sewer services at the location on Terminal Road. Olson Choice is also paying all the fees required for development as outlined in the schedule of rates and fees. Conception of South recognizes the burden of taxation has traditionally been heavily weighed on the residual tax base, as we've all said here tonight, and we continue to say, and, and has made it a priority to attract new commercial and industrial businesses to the town to expand its commercial tax base. When combined with estimated fees collected over this 10 year time frame, it is expected that the project will provide total direct revenue to the town of approximately $750,000. It will continue to contribute annually in property, business and water and sewer beyond that time frame. So I'm going to end off, and my mind's not as long as some of the others there tonight. Um, I'm not going to speak on the social media and all that. I think people have already said enough on that, and uh, councillors are all well aware of uh, listening to residents and uh, some of their concerns, and also listening to people who I've spoken to who, who wanted to go ahead and are very happy to see a new tax a new person paying some taxes here, a commercial business. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow councillors, uh, Madam Cheryl, this revised proposal strikes the balance. And I would, and I think that it is a good project for our town and I will be supporting this resolution and we'll be voting yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Butler. I guess that only leaves me. And uh, I just have a very uh, few comments before I turn it back over to Councillor Hillier to close debate. Uh, I will say that uh, I'm pleased this evening to announce that I too will be supporting this uh, resolution. Uh, I think that this is a, uh, a win-win situation for the town of Conception Bay South along with the residents. And I'm certainly not gonna try and uh, get in and rehash everything that's been said, because I certainly appreciate what, what's been said, and I agree with everything that's been said. But I will say this, that especially with respect to the navigation, the, uh, the uh, recreational boaters navigation channel, when this is finished, I mean, will be 
almost twice as wide as what it is now. In fact, it will be 120 meters away from the opposite side of the shore. And just as a comparison, the opening of the harbor is only 78 meters. So it's going to be almost double the width when the recreational boaters want to go in and out of that, uh, out of that area. Uh, OCI, of course, as part of the, uh, the approval process, will be required to properly light the navigation channel with government approved lighting. Uh, and Ocean Choice is also committed to maintain the water depths in the recreational channel at their current level, which is a maximum of 1.2 meters. So that's only just a few of the things that, that Ocean Choice has, has agreed to do. And, and I got to say that I struggled in the beginning when, when this uh, proposal was brought forward. And I said publicly and privately in our meetings that I cannot support a proposal that will have a negative impact, especially on the residents that are on the other side of that harbor. And I don't think given the information that we've been given by the experts, that it will have a negative impact on it. In fact, I think at the end of the day, everybody will be certainly pleased with it. Uh, when we talk about social media and, and the conversations that have taken place, the phone calls and the emails that I've received, and looking at the comments from individuals and groups on social media, uh, while I understand that people are pretty passionate and I respect respectful comments and concerns. What I don't like and what I disrespect is when it reaches a level when individuals accuse municipal politicians as lining their pockets. Accusing municipal politicians of being in bed with the developers and accusing of municipal politicians of only being interested in their families. I think that stoops to a new low and I'm certainly disappointed. However, as Councillor Bursey said, we took the high road. You didn't comment on those kind of um, accusations and I certainly won't say any more about it. But I will say that it's been a pleasure to deal with OCI and I'd like to thank Mr. Blaine Sullivan and the OCI people for being respectful for our concerns and needs, being respectful for our residents' concerns and needs by taking the land use impact report, assessment report, and redoing it to make sure that everybody was looked after at a substantial cost, as, as was also mentioned. And uh, so thank you for that. And I personally wish Ocean Choice International all the best in their uh, business ventures in Conception Bay South, because we as, as a town and a community, and I can't speak for future councils, but I'm sure that we will work with people like OCI to make sure that uh, they get uh, the, the, uh, the proper authorizations that will benefit not only them, but the people of our town. Uh, in closing, I'd like to uh, thank council for their due diligence and patience and support. Uh, we've had many, many a meeting, many long hours of arguing. Uh, I'd also like to pay uh, a special, special thanks to Councillor Hillier, the, the, the uh, Planning and Development Committee Chair, who has guided me through this process. Thank you very much, Rex, for that. Our staff have been totally cooperative, worked very, very hard, very many long hours to bring us to where we are this evening. And finally, I would like to thank the uh, provincial government for all of the support and understanding and for giving us due diligence on our requests and working in a, a, a quick manner so that we could get this project underway and get it, uh, get it started. So on that note, um, thank you very much, everybody. And I will now turn it back over to Councillor Hillier, who will close the debate before we ask for the vote. Thank you, Worship. Uh, Sometimes we try to summarize what, what our colleagues have said, but I'm not even going to start. It's uh, very comprehensive, and I, I think you've, you've hit every point that we've talked about over the last 10 months and, and identified the concerns and the benefits and so on. And, and your worship, we've got, we've got eight people around this table, and eight people have spoken in favor of this project. Eight intelligent people, uh, eight people of different backgrounds, uh, we were all elected four years ago to make decisions uh, in the best interest of our town. 
And your worship, that's what we were about to do. We've gathered the information. Uh, we've studied the information. We've done our due, due diligence. And we're prepared to make that decision. As you just indicated, I also, I'd like to thank each of them, each of the councillors for the support and guidance over the past 10 months. I would also like to thank our staff uh, for the work they've done in bringing this together. This has not been an easy file on anybody. And I, I reach out to staff. I know the hours, I know the expertise that was required to keep this together. Finally, I'd like to thank all those residents who provided input. And as a result of their engagement, the following are some of the concerns that have been addressed in this process. Residents felt that the infill was too close to the eastern shore and should be on the industrial side of the harbor. The new proposal is pushed right up against the industrial side of the harbor. Residents felt that the original proposal should not be right in the middle of the pond. This new proposal, is pushed right up to the land in the southwest corner of the pond. There was a concern about sedimentation around Sunset Key Marina. With the project moved further west, this will no longer be a concern. Concerns were expressed that a potential phase two would fill in more of the pond and further encroach on Sunset Key and recreational boating in general. The latest proposal puts a potential phase two behind the main, infill adjacent, in, the main infill and adjacent to Terminal Road. There was concern about a mud wave during construction. OCI commissioned a special engineering study which indicated that this was not a concern. There were concerns about the configuration of the navigation channel. On a new proposal, this is not an issue as the distance from the infill to the eastern shore is significantly wider than the main opening coming into the harbor where ships come in and out. And your worship, there were concerns about the first hydrodynamic study. The town chose to commission a second study by its own engineering consultants. The first task they carried out was to validate the work of the first engineering group in their study. So now we've got two studies that tell us that there's no concern about flooding, wave action, current changes, erosion or ice buildup as a result of this infill. Your Worship, this is an evening of celebration as we start a new chapter in the development of the Port of Long Pond. And we call on all residents to embrace Ocean Choice International and welcome them to our business community. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Hillier. Uh, I guess the discussion has ended, so we'll now call for the vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, those against? The motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you, Worship. Thank, Thank you. you, Worship. Thank, Thank you. you. So that concludes the, uh, the end of our uh, special meeting of uh, June 29th. I will now call for a motion for adjournment. So moved. Moved by Councillor Billy, seconded by Councillor Rex Hiller. All those in favour? Favour? Aye. 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 Motion is carried. Again, uh, to the public, to the general public, thank you very, very much for tuning in. Uh, I've been looking at it. It looks like we had a, a real good audience this evening, which we really appreciate. And uh, we wish you all the best. And uh, we will convene our next regular meeting in about two weeks' time, I do believe. So anyway, uh, thank you very much, everybody, and stay